Okay, we are live. Well, welcome back to God is in the House Part 2. So we're going to go right into the book of Nehemiah. And um, we've looked at a few things. So um, we looked at Part 1, which was uh, Chapter 1, and uh, where we looked at uh, Nehemiah's name was Comfort comfort of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. But he's also, but it also is, he's a son of prayer. And uh, God gave him an assignment and allowed everything to fall into place for him. But he had opposition, not from the king, but from the king's governors. Hmm. hmm. These governors who had certain authority, not as much as the king's, but they always used their authority to best pad their pocket, mm -hmm. <laughs> best to pad their pride, best to pad whatever that they wanted to have the power. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Geshem, uh, we talked about them, and they were the governors. And um, the king Xerxes gave uh, Nehemiah a permit, and in that permit, uh, gave him access to the king's everything. You know, <laughs> get the t lumber, get all the things that he needed, rocks, because it said uh, Jerusalem was nothing but a pile of rubble, and the, even the rocks were burnt. So he couldn't even use the rocks. It's rubbish. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at that in uh, in Nehemiah chapter four. Uh, have you have you ever had trouble in the rubble? <laughs> hey, you ever you ever, you ever had any trouble in the rubble? Hey, mm -hmm. Judith. Yes, sir. Yeah, any trouble in the rubble? <laughs> what about you, Deb? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we get trouble in the rubble. So are you going to run, or are you going to stand firm? Or are you going to call it? Yeah, that's the face. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, very quickly in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 10, Sambalat. Oh, he was two. a, I know, Nehemiah chapter 2, okay. uh, 10, Sambalat. He was a Heronite, a cave dweller. And his name basically means hidden sin and idolatry. And, uh, it, and in brackets, uh, because of being a Heronite, um, in the Heronite language, it means the enemy in secret. Mm. <laughs> have you run into any of those guys who have uh, who are slippery and uh, mocking and whatever? But the enemy in secret. So the second person was a, from Moab. He was a Moabite, and uh, and with that uh, we talked about. You can go to last to the last uh, uh, podcast and get that. But Moab has always been a thorn in Israel's side, and. Uh, to the Palestinians today, but Moab uh, is, I say, always a thorn in Israel's flesh, hmm. and they really like to mock. Mm -hmm. Okay, they always and they and they like to use false authority. Okay, mm -hmm. false authority and mock you. Mm -hmm. We'll see that when we get to um, uh, Nehemiah four. And then, then we have Geshem, who's uh, from the tribe of Ishmael. And uh, his name, um, you know, uh, I'm sorry, but T Tobiah the Ammonite, uh, his name means Jehovah God in, in the Ammonite language. So he was already showing himself as an imposter with authority, Jehovah God, but he, he was the furthest, furthest from it. He was an Ammonite. He wasn't, he wasn't uh, a son of his, uh, of, uh, he, he wasn't a Hebrew. He wasn't a son, son of Israel. Especially 4.19. Yeah, and, and, uh, and his name means the goodness of God, but all he wants is goodness to put in his pocket. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's a small G. Mm -hmm. It's the goodness of God. So he's a lying, mocking spirit. And then, uh, so that's Nehemiah uh, 10, uh, 2 verse 10. And then Nehemiah 2 verse 19 the uh, <coughs> Geshem is an Arab, uh, descended from Ishmael, Hagar, and his 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 name is is like fertile waters, and grain and being blessed, but uh, but he's the op opposite of that because um, uh, he he's the one that put all the all the uh, people all the children of Israel in slavery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he, he's the mocker. Right? He's the uh, and he wants to put you in, uh, in slavery, so. Uh, we're going to get into that in, in chapter five. So when you so you look at all you go through this, and uh, 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 
what, in verse 10, it says, When Sambalat the Heronite and Tobiah the Ammonite and the official heard of it, they were deeply uh, disturbed that a man had come to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. So anytime you go do something that is going to be for the well-being of the children of God, there's, these guys are going to come out of the woodwork and try to, try to uh, and quietly mm -hmm. and secretly put you into a, a difficult place. Uh, yeah, so you've got to be aware of them and uh, know how to uh, pray. In verse 13 it says, And he went all night to the valley of the gate uh, of the serpent well and the refuse gate and viewed the walls of Jerusalem and how they all were broken down and they were burnt and even in fire. So in the Hebrew it says that even the rocks were burnt. So it was just a pile of rubble. Um, in verse 19 it, it says, But when Sambalat the Hor Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official and Geshem the Arab heard of it, they laughed and they started mocking the promises of a God. Mm -hmm. He said, these guys are going to do what and make uh, something out of that mm -hmm. pile of rubble? No way they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, so they were, but something, uh, they laughed and, and as they laughed, it, it, something happened. They despised, they came into a place of, what happens when you despise somebody? Is that hatred? Yeah. That you is. sneer, you make fun, you are sarcastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All What's happening that. in the States? Are there, are there, is there anarchy? Are, are one, are different groups despising each I different people? You, you know, they're, they're, mm -hmm. you are with me? Mm -hmm. So once they got past the, the mocking, then they went into a place to create separation mm -hmm. and bringing uh, that anarchy and bringing uh, that spirit yeah. of fear. The spirit of fear. And we, we, we know in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, uh, verse... Seven. Huh? Seven. One, yeah, seven. Yeah. The Lord has not given me a spirit of fear, father, love, and sound mind. Yeah. yeah. Did you get that? <laughs> there is no spirit of fear when you got power of love and sound mind. and mm -hmm. What else? Power. Power. Resurrection, life, and power. Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Amen. Yay? So balance, you know. So oh, thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, so th they started to despise. So when you despise something, you, you, they have their own Zoom calls mm -hmm. and uh, parties. And, and how, how can we really hurt these people? Mm. What can we do to block block their advantage? What can we do to stop their plan? Mm. Because everything we had before was, you know, as far as God's plan, right? That uh, um, Nehemiah was going to go through. So part three is fulfilling, fulfilling God's plan. Uh, uh, like verse three or chapter three, you mean? When we get it, we're, when we, we're going there. Oh, okay. So right now, what is going to stop God's plan? But is the opposition? What we're going to be talking about is fulfilling God's plan in, in this before this segment's out. And uh, so the Ammon, so the officials, they really wanted. They mocked and then they despised. So if you're going to despise somebody, what are your are you going to are you going to intimidate them? Mm -hmm. Are you going to bully them? Are you going to put them into a place of fear? I wonder if that's happening. So okay, so the number one tactic of the enemy, number one, he's going to mock you. Well, okay. Number two, he is going to bring fear. Okay, he's, okay, mocking and then fear. On, on this on this life application of Nehemiah, we're giving you a life application study. And the enemy's not so creative. He, he, he keeps to the same tactics, okay? So he's going to try to mock you so that if you have a spirit of rejection, you might back off, mm -hmm. right? Or you might pull away. Or if you don't think you have the authority, pull back. If a bully comes in, you're going to probably pull back. And then he's going to bring fear in to, to another level. He's going to be like that Leviathan uh, bully that we talked about in Job chapter uh, four, 41, Okay, so so we're going to see the bully tactics and the fear coming. So and and so they despised and said, "What is this thing that they are doing?" Then they started to say, "You know, what are they doing?" And will you rebel against the king? So even though they've got authority uh, from the king to do this, they're already twisting the words around like social media, mm -hmm. CNN. You know, they're they're already taking it out of context. And uh, is that happening today? Huh, gee, 
I wonder if we've got the devil's plan here. You know how to pray mm -hmm. in regards to how they want to bring false witness. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So, all right. Uh, will, will you rebel against the king? So they're going to bring all kinds of other data in and, oh, it's the Russians that are doing this and it's those guys doing that and those guys in Carberry and that God is in the house, they're causing all kinds of smoke and whatever and they're causing us problems. Let's, let's phone the mayor of Carberry. Mm -hmm. And they did. And they did. And we got an open-handed letter. Mm -hmm. well, all right, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, we, we prayed through that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how many people in Carberry are watching this, but anyway. So, and so I answered them and he said to them, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. So I answered. Who's answering? So I answered. Nehemiah, he, they're doing it to his face. Mm -hmm. And he says, you uncircumcised Philistines. Yeah. Right? He's telling them right up. Okay, that, as you said, Joshua uh, chapter 1, verses 5 and 9. Stand and be a great career. Heard. So, so he went right to their face. And he said, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. So that, that's where we had that Psalm 94, 16. Mm -hmm. Arise, arise, arise. Mm -hmm. Who will be my champion who will come against the enemy mm -hmm. and win, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to do that. We have to arise. All right. But you have no heritage. Mm -hmm. He's talking to Huey, Dewey, and Louie mm -hmm. with all these false names. You got no heritage. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a bunch of mongrels. <laughs> He's telling them to his face, all these governors. Mm -hmm. You got no heritage. I have heritage, and I, I'm going to restore mm -hmm. the generations that are lost mm -hmm. because God has given me assignment. Mm -hmm. You have an assignment. Mm -hmm. Not only to protect, but to what? Be the assignment of God to go in and intervene to those situations that need peace mm -hmm. and saving. Okay, so now we're in chapter 3. It says rebuilding the wall. And chapter 3 is kind of cool. It just says nobody out of the 40 families... How many tribes? 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. There was 40 families. And the 40 families were all given assignments and they were trained. So it didn't matter if you were a goldsmith or if you were a baker or whatever you were, you were given a certain segment. That's, that wall you have to build and you have to build it to compliance so it fits and looks like, not a mosaic, so it fits and looks like the Jerusalem wall. You got that? Mm -hmm. So you've got these uh, little watchmaker kind of guys with skin, skin, spin, spinny little arms and whatever and, and little glasses and uh, like this and, uh, you know, kind of nerdy. And uh, they got to carry the big rocks too. Mm -hmm. you, you with me? N no exception. Mm -hmm. Get it done. Mm -hmm. Training. You're going to have a sword in one hand, a trowel in the other. And whatever your gifts are, praise God, you know how to bake. Mm -hmm. But right now you're going to put a wall together. And you're going to have a trowel in one end, a sword in the other, and we're going to teach you how to do all three. Mm -hmm. Then you, once that's done, you can go back to baking again. Mm -hmm. Great. You with me? Okay. So so the three is all the lineage of the 40 families. And then you get into chapter four. Okay. And now chapter four is uh, we're getting into uh, some neat things in chapter four. Uh, can somebody read verses six, seven, and eight? of chapter 4. Who's got it? Nehemiah, uh, chapter 4, verses, uh, verses uh, 6, 7, and 8. You're quite a ways from the microphone, so speak up, please. <laughs> me? Okay. So build me the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass that when Sambala and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashtonites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wrong. And conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Okay. So they're starting to they're starting to, to finish to do the plan, right? The plan to rebuild the walls. 
So immediately while they start to plan, the enemy comes up and starts to intimidate them, to bring fear. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, because they start talking, they're murmuring and complaining, how can we fight these big guys? Or whatever it is. But, th but they get snapped into shape by, by listening and being obedient, mm -hmm. even though they, they weren't designed to be a fighter. They, they just did what they were told. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Just do what you're told and God loves obedience. Well, and what's interesting, like, this, you know, in this translation, it reads, like, in verse 8, um, they all, like, it was like they started, they ganged up sort of thing, like, in verse verse 7, like, they, you know, they became very angry, these guys, because they heard that the walls were coming together. But then, um, and all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Mm -hmm. And isn't that just like the enemy? That's number three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Mockery, then fear, and then try to bring confusion. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see that? So, yeah. <laughs> Just think of some of the battles you've been in. Yeah. And what, you, what battles come against us. Mm -hmm. And what battles, and, and just see, the, just mark it down, as these th this formula. Or tip of, yeah. I, and just see, okay, you might be praying for somebody, and they might be in, in <clears throat> step number four. And you've already seen that. So then you're going to know what number five is going to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can pray against it, right? We'll, isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, yeah, we talked, you know, I didn't give a, a lot of, uh, you know, I talked about it. Who are, who are these ash, these ash, what do they call them? Ashnodites. Oh, ash, ash, yeah. Yeah, in other words, they're the little lackeys, mm -hmm. okay? There's always little lackeys that'll, you know, that'll, that'll come in and try to, and try to make a, uh, the big guys speaking, the little lackeys even speaking louder, but, you know, so mm -hmm. that's why they're making, a, they make a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to those guys who have a lot of noise but no substance, mm -hmm. and you go up, you come up against them, and they're gone? Mm -hmm. You don't even have to hit those guys in the head. <laughs> but you know, uh, 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 you know. I'm, that is, if you're the fighter. If you're the fighter, you know, because all you have to do is look at them; they're going to run. Leslie runs into these kind of people all the time, and mm -hmm. on, on, in, in the, uh, uh, I, I want, I, I want you to, I want you to see what Leslie looks like. Okay, stand up. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay, come on up. All right, put on your. Uh, uh. All right. So you got some little national day, or the Sam Ballad, your got whatever. Stand up. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. And they're trying to they're they're okay, they're they're trying to intimidate you, but you know who you are, and you have a sword. So what are you going to tell that little Ashnodite or Sam Ballad or Tobiah or Geshem? And what kind of face are you going to have? <laughs> You don't have to give the face that you show me when I'm out of line. Okay. You don't have to do that one. But you, well, I could do something. You can see it real quick. But anyway, no. Just, okay. So what, what, if, what does that look like when you, when you are firm and you're not going to move and the enemy knows it? What are you going to say and what are you going to do? I'm sorry, there's no script for this. <laughs> no, I, 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 Ablev is good. Yeah, okay. What am I going to say? What am I going to do? You, you seem to know. You let me know. Well, I well you're, you, you're, you're not going to amount to anything. You know, they're, they're just mocking you. They're just, they're just okay, okay. You, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> I'm saying, yep. <laughs> not on my watch. Ah, not on my watch. <laughs> you see? <laughs> okay, I, I've been prodded and poked a few times. No, no, no. no. So, uh, that's okay. I submit. All right, I'm going back to the hill country. Okay. Okay, back. Back, back. back. So, so the Ashnodites are the first ones to run. Back. back. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, how far do you want me to go back? Well, get back. I am getting back. Back where you came from. That's right. Oh, I, I'm back. back. I am back. I'm back. Okay. Right. So you get the it? Line, the line is here. Okay. Or, oh, there. easy. I shaved. That's, that's a weapon. 
Well, it's not a, it's not, see, it's see that's during tea. That's the weapon that you put in my hand, you see. Well, what weapon did God put in your hands too? The sword of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And the word of what God. What about Shaftari? And what praying in tongues always? You take them out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you take them out. Oh. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. You got it, you got it. Oh. <laughs> okay, all right. Now you're, now you're there. Okay, just... This is just in case. Take two steps back, please. <laughs> You're in my space. <laughs> you know, you asked for it. Okay. Oh, there it is. Now, now we're getting... No. That's the face. That's the face I'm looking for. You asked for it. Okay, the anointing. You see the anointing when it hits? Yeah. Okay, all right, now. All right, okay. There. Okay, I've seen this happen in places, okay? In the end, okay. No, no, we're, we're gonna, we're, one more illustrated sermon while she's up. When they were building the wall, okay, in Nehemiah, um, where there's trouble in the rubble, it's kind of cool that there were some places in the rubble where uh, the, the, the walls were built on either side. So we have a wall here, okay, and there's a wall there where May is, but then there's a gap. So who do you think they put in the gap? The, the, uh, the children of Israel got behind the partial walls because the enemy was all there with their armor, with their arrows and javelins and all that type of thing. But there were certain people that they put in the gap because the enemy would all run to where the gap is to try to run through the gap. So you stand firm and is the enemy going to get past you? <laughs> huh? do, 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 have you got this in the spirit? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? The enemy, it doesn't matter what the horde is. Mm -hmm. An anointed man, woman of God will be put in the gap, as it says in Nehemiah 4.14. And the enemy shall not pass because she's got all her faith, mm -hmm. all her strength in Jehovah. Mm -hmm. And she knows it and they know it. And she's not going to have to use that sword. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? We just have to stand in faith. So mm -hmm. that is an important thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I got two illustrations out of one there. <laughs> and almost a haircut. <laughs> I got some buttons gone here. Well. Lorraine, you're going to have to put some buttons back on. She took a couple of buttons off <laughs> with her sword. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so when there's trouble in the rubble... <laughs> God is going to train you up and to have the courage to be, you know, when you read, when you read through it um, in, ch in chapter 4, uh, we, when you read, uh, uh, we, you read what down to 9? Okay, um, in verse 10, 9 and 10, it says, Nevertheless, we've made our prayer to our God. And because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. So you, God gives you a strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay, watch one on the wall. Then Judah said, the strength of the labor, labors is failing. And there is so much rubbish that we are not able to build a wall. So then there has to become strategy to get the rubbish out of the way. Okay, has to clear. you have to clear out the broken stuff so that you can fight right. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because it's going to get in the way. And our adversary said that they will they will neither know know nor see anything till we come into the midst and kill them. In other words, they're already mocking them because we can slip through the rubbish. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you've got stuff piled up in your life that the enemy can use as diversion to get in to cause greater difficulty, get rid of the rubbish in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Clear the path. Yeah, that's good. Clear the path of God. Some of you have got rubbish. And you've got burnt stones from all kinds of different difficult things in your life and you're holding on to them. Release them to God. Get it cleared out so that the, wall, the walls of my salvation, it says in Isaiah 60 verse 18, so the walls of salvation will be around you and his gates will be praised. He cannot build a wall around you if you've got rubbish and you're a hoarder and you're not doing any work to get rid of it. And, you're, and you've compromised your position to say, I can live in the rubbish. Hmm. And God says, I didn't make my sons and daughters to do that because I am preparing a place for you. Hmm. I am preparing a beautiful place for you. And I don't want you living in no rubbish. 
You with it? You got it? Okay. So verse uh, 12, it says, So it was, and when the Jews, um, when the Jews who dwelt near them came, that they told us ten times, from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. So that was the gaps in the wall. So in other words, they had so many people that they put pressure on all the empty places. And then they looked for, uh, they looked for the children, because it, in there you'll see that the whole family was there with spears, mm -hmm. and the wives too. So they would look for the weaknesses, how many had women and children, and how many actual fighters were there. Mm -hmm. Because, it, because to them, they, they could see be, because they're only about uh, 20 feet apart at some times. Do you with me? It's an easy thing to see who's a child and a, and a, and a woman and who's, who's a man based on stature. And the helmet that's fallen down or the shield that they can't hold up. Can you hold up a shield? Do you know how to use a sword? Can you lift the mighty right arm of, of the sword of God that's heavy with the anointing? Can you take the spear of God and thrust it at the enemy? How many feet? With God, it's infinite. Mm -hmm. It's not your strength. I hope you're getting this. Because Sambalat, Tobiah, Geshem, and all those little uh, dodo birds that are, went extinct, those little doggy things, you know, they knew who was supreme. The enemy knows who is supreme. They're just trying to wear you down. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're trying to wear down the people in the United States? Definitely. Do you think they're trying to wear down in other places in the world? Yeah. Yeah. To, to have you to what? Compromise your position of who you are as a son of God. Mm -hmm. Don't you compromise your position. Mm -hmm. don't, you, don't you compromise the blood. Don't you compromise the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't you compromise the word of Adonai Elohim. And don't compromise... Who the living God is inside you. Because he, you can do all things through God who strengthens you. Amen. All things. Therefore I, pos I position men behind the lower parts of the wall. And at the openings I put Leslie. And then I found Deborah. <laughs> and I found Judith. And then I put Don. And then I put May and Ralph. And I, I know who my warriors are. And I put them right in the gap. So the enemy can see them. And they will turn and it says and I set the people according to their families with their swords and spears in their boxes and I looked <laughs> I, and I looked and I, and I rose and said to the nobles and to the leaders and to the rest of the people do not be afraid of them remember the Lord is great and awesome and fight for your brethren Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. Fight for your houses. Do you think in this COVID-19, you need to get to a place to fight for your spouse? Fight. Fight for your children and your spouses. Fight for God is in the house. Fight for your community. Or are you just going to sit back and say, ah, oh, they can just take it I, I, I. I'm so apathetic, indifferent, lethargic. They're just going to send me another check. Hmm. Are they? Do you think they're setting you up? <clears throat> Verse 15. And it happened when our, en when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought their plot to nothing. Who brought their plot to nothing? What do you got in, in verse 15? And God brought their plot, mm. bought their plan. Mm. Remember we talked, God has a plan, we're going to work the plan, number two, that's where we're at. <laughs> we're doing God's plan. Mm -hmm. We're listening. Jeremiah 29, 11. It, it says, Jesus, the Father says, it's my thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. It's my thoughts that I have for you. It's my plans. <laughs> We just have to come in agreement with it. Mm -hmm. If it's your plan, if you tell God, this is your plan, this is your purpose, would you bless it? Yeah. And by the way, uh, da, 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 da. You can't, you know, that's not the way. That's not the way it works. You have to have releasing orders and assignment. Mm -hmm. so what do you got? It's, well, it's just that the, it's the plot. God brings to nothing the enemy's plot against them. Or what the, what they're all the, the, the yapping, harassing voices. 
Yeah. Um, and what they're trying to they're trying to use as um, fear tactics against God's people. Mm. God's bringing those plans to nothing that mm -hmm. they materialize not. And so then, once God gets those guys out of the way, then they can return to building the wall, get back to what God's plan is, mm -hmm. and His work. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Psalm 2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, this is where we need to be, uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord, this is where we need to be, Ecclesia. In the Exo-Jesus Bible, in verse 14, it's, and, it, and it says, um, and it talks about the nobles and the rulers and the, and the, and, and the prefects, and the rest of the people. And it says, Be ye not afraid of them. The awe, <laughs> the awe, the awe, is not in their faces. <laughs> you understand? The awe, the awe of God is in our faces. Mm -hmm. yes. They're trying to bring fear to us, and it says out of the out of the Hebrew here, the awe is is not the awe is in our faces. The mm -hmm. awe of God is in our yeah. faces, in our eyes, in, in our it. action. Oh and my goodness! Fear of God is in their faces. That's it. Do you, do you see that? That's the faith, believing, and receiving. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the exo, that's the exo Jesus, and um, yeah, it says, "Don't be afraid." Don't be afraid of them. Remember Adonai, who is great and great and fearful, and he will fight for your everybody. Basically, mm -hmm. you know, he, he's going to look after. It. So that's where we have to have the faith in in verses fourteen and fifteen. Uh, faith, believing, receiving, to be in that covenant walk with God, and He's going to look after everything. All we have to do is stand and believe, and uh, sometimes we have to pray too. Okay. Then, then you can look through there. It says you have to do some preparation. We've got to get some shields and bows and armor. We have to get ready to fight. Okay. Uh, sometimes we have to get ready to fight and prepare our, our, ourselves. And uh, and so verse sixteen, uh, verse sixteen says. So it was from that time on that half of my servants worked off the off the construction, and while the other half held the spears. In other words. Even the slaves, even the slaves came in and worked the same as who? The sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. Even the slaves came in and put their life on the line. Interesting. Remember, we get to chapter 5. And they, they, it was 50-50. And so those who built the wall... And those who carried the burdens. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Verse 17. Those who built the wall and those who carried the burdens. Anybody else got anything different on 17? No. No. Pretty well the same? Mm -hmm. Okay. What were the burdens? Hmm? Well, all the, all the building the materials. materials. Everything to make it happen. <clears throat> the administration, uh, the burdens of carrying the glory of God, mm -hmm. the leaders, whoever, everybody carried it equally. Even the bird procession. There you go. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then it said they, they loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at the construction and the other hand they had a weapon. And so in the different ones, one had a trowel, one had a sword in either hand, right? And half of them slept. The other half worked. They they were they were well tuned. What machine? <laughs> and and they rebuilt the wall in fifty two days with forty different families who went through short training, yeah. fighting COVID nineteen, mm -hmm. and won. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I wonder. I wonder where we should be looking to heaven for our answers for some of this. In verse twenty, it says, "And whenever they heard the sound of the shofar." Anybody have shofar there? It says trumpet. Rally to us there. So when Leslie was in the gap, there would be a, a shofar player. He, he would blow the shofar, and then all the army would shift. Mm -hmm. So they were as one. Mm -hmm. As one. And nobody was ever left alone. Isn't that interesting? 
got your back. Judith, you got my back? Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. You got Don's back? Yeah. You just met him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go. That's the way it should be in the family. Okay. And then in verse 23, um, it says, So neither I or my brethren, my servants, nor the men on guard who followed me took off our clothes. How many days? Except for washing, it says. Oh. They 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 did maintain cleanliness. Mm -hmm. But fifty two days they were they were diligent in everything, right? Mm -hmm. I wonder who washed their clothes. The ones that were supposed to be resting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want you to know everybody had. They probably had, the, whoever was a a lord or whatever. Regardless, I bet you the servants were busy doing their job. Mm -hmm. So they had to do it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Th that would have been a paradigm shift for them to wash their own underwear with streaks. <laughs> <clears throat> we got some smiles around the table. Uh, okay. I know, right? All what right. Making? So chapter four is done. Chapter five, trouble in the rubble. I know we're done. So we're going into chapter five uh, next Thursday. And chapter five is going to be what is the hidden, what is the hidden thing in your life? Okay, I want it's going to be an awesome day for you, because whatever is hidden, God's going to bring it up, mm -hmm. and it's no longer going to keep you in slavery, no longer going to keep you in an orphan spirit, no longer if if you Amen. are in it, there's going to be a freedom. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so that's going to be what we call part three, which is fulfilling God's plan. And the, so whatever um, is being repaired in the wall is being repaired in you. Hmm. Because you're the living stone that's going in the wall. Hmm. Out of what? First Peter chapter 2, we are the holy priesthood, the living stones that are being placed in the wall of salvation Amen. in the case of praise. And you can't go in there unless you're a good block. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it pays to be a blockhead. You've got to be a good block, and you've got to fit. <laughs> and God's going to be, and and it, and it's got to be right. Hmm. So, and if there's any chips that have to come off your shoulder or any other part of your life, He's going to chip them off so you fit perfectly. Amen. And no longer are you going to be carrying a chip on your shoulder hmm. or a hidden thing in your heart. Praise the God. Amen. Freedom. <laughs> Amen. Where the spirit of the Lord there is freedom and liberty. Amen. So you guys are going to go through a rock experience next week. A lot of chipping will be going on. And um, look up the word usury. Look up the word usury in chapter 5. I want you to do a bit of a study. Have you ever been the usury or the userer? <laughs> Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Once you understand what usury what? is, huh? What? Well, once you find what usury is, oh, then you've got to write down, were you the person that was using usury on somebody or was somebody using usury on you? And if that's the case, write it down, write it down because you're going to have to forgive them and you're going to have to come into a place of reconciliation and restoration. So you fit in the wall. Amen. Or else the enemy, that usury is some of the rubble that's out there that the enemy can use against you. Hmm. So, as, as I, sometimes when you go to the back of the book, it helps. <clears throat> so the enemy's plan, number one, is to mock you, um, and his plan of evil is to intimidate you. Number two, fear tactic, he's going to bully you, and uh, we went through that, the fear tactic of bullying, and so on. Uh, number three, he's going to try to bring you into a place of compromising your position. And we're going to get into chapter six on that in the next week. The fourth thing that's going to come in, he's going to use the open-handed letter, where he's using... Uh, leverage from government officials or any other officials over your life 
to uh, put you in bondage. Mm -hmm. Is that happening with COVID-19? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The open-handed letter. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, we're, we're going to go into that. And, and then number five is the lying counterfeit false prophet that is going to be brought into your life to give you false direction. Mm -hmm. That Nehemiah had to handle it. And, and you're going to have the discernment to understand <coughs> the false prophet when the false prophet is maybe your best friend mm -hmm. or somebody that you know because he's being paid off to do this. <coughs> I wonder if people are being paid off in COVID-19 to say certain things. <laughs> uh, no doubt. So that's, that's a real lying counterfeit thing. And number six, I'm going to go through the, I am going to bring out, based on the counterfeit, I'm going to teach you on the six kings that are of the counterfeit nature. Uh, 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 excuse me, that's number six. The counterfeit kings, and there's five of them. And I'm going to teach on that. Five counterfeit kings? Five kings. counterfeit kings. kings. And you'll find, you'll find that in Joshua chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. So all this... Yeah, so all this is a practical uh, life application study for you to pray for yourself or your loved ones. And how is the enemy going to attack in the past? Well, these are some of the things that he uses quite a bit. And if you recognize them, then you'll know how to pray and say, oh, Lord, give me wisdom, revelation. Is this what the Lord is going to do? Mm -hmm. And he might say, no, he's going to skip number five and he's going to hit you with six. At least, at least you know, or he's going to bring something else out. At least you're in a place of understanding how the enemy's going to attack. Mm -hmm. And if you're standing in the middle of the wall, you know you've got the all heaven behind you. Amen. So the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you and the Lord make his face just shine upon you. And if he needs to give you a warrior's face like my wife, <laughs> let that happen with you're in the, you know, th that's a good one too. <laughs> and the Lord be gracious to you and let his light countenance shine upon you and, and just bring you that brilliance of revelation and understanding mm -hmm. to see things through God's eyes. Mm -hmm. And the Lord give thee peace now, shalom, mm -hmm. now and forevermore. Mm -hmm. See you next Thursday. And we got some surprises maybe next Thursday too. Bless you.